Hello, fellow eco geeks. I want to share with you a story today. Basically, it's about these trees, the giant eastern hemlock. And it's kind of an unfortunate story because these bugs are absolutely obliterating the population. Like we might lose the entire thing. So scientists are trying to figure out a solution. Essentially a couple options, chemical control, not a great option, <laughs> or introducing a predator from Asia that would eat the bugs not a bad option, or saving the genes, trying to regrow the species, uh, and a few other options which we talk about in this video that I made with Trenton. A slightly different style to the ones that you might normally have seen on our channel, but I think it's a fantastic way at looking at science told by the scientists. And I'm really curious what you think. So without further ado, here's the short. The Eastern Hemlock is being attacked by a non-native insect, the hemlock woolly adelgid, which came from Japan back in the 1950s into Virginia. And it has spread now throughout more than half the range of eastern hemlock. It rapidly kills these hemlocks and really changes the nature of these unique ecosystems. So there has been an effort over the past 20 years now to manage and save hemlock. There are different strategies being used to try to reduce the impact of the adelgid in our forests. The effort to manage hemlock woolly adelgid has a lot of different components. There's probably not one silver bullet that's going to solve the hemlock woolly adelgid problem. We really need continued research on how we can integrate the different approaches on the same forest land. There's a lot of hemlocks right there. I forgot about all those. There's a nice little edge, edge of hemlocks. I'm Steve Norman. I'm a research ecologist with the Eastern Threat Assessment Center of the Forest Service. Oh yeah, this is nice. So this tree, Looks like this tree has not been treated, or if it was treated, it was a little bit ago. So from the top, you can see them shining through a little bit. Hemlock are important just because they have really dense foliage. If you're under a hemlock tree, not much grows. It's because it's so shaded in a normal condition. And that helps provide a very special type of habitat in the forest, such as riparian areas. They're important for water quality and water quantity. People turn on the water faucet and out comes the water. Well, it had a long history to get there that included a lot of mountain watersheds and the health of those watersheds ultimately uh, ensure that you end up with nice, high quality water at the tap. It's hard to make that connection if you don't have the science and just that greater awareness of the outdoors. And so if you look during the winter time in a location that was predominantly hemlock, you see a decrease in the amount of greenness that is seen from the satellite that's caused by the loss of evergreen species. And this is almost like a signature of hemlock woolly adelgid activity and the resultant hemlock decline. The hemlock woolly adelgid is a, is a tiny insect that settles at the base of the hemlock needles and it inserts its mouth parts to feed on sugars contained in the twigs. So one of the ways in which this insect damages the tree is by depleting the sugars or the carbohydrates that the tree produces and, and needs to survive and to grow. I think one of the biggest challenges for trying to manage hemlock woolly adelgid is how prolific its population is. It reproduces so quickly that it's very difficult to get ahead of it. My name is Andy Whittier. I'm a research forester with CAMCOR Cooperative at North Carolina State University. I've got an eastern hemlock here. I'm gonna climb up it and try and get some cones for our gene conservation efforts. A lot of our seed collections happen in the fall when the cones are ripe in the seed and eastern hemlocks are riparian species. So sometimes you're climbing up above a creek or a waterfall and you're just 100 feet above the forest looking around at the leaves changing. That's probably my favorite part. Can you pull it? Nice. Cutting. Coming down. So we are basically just the insurance policy. We're trying to have seed in storage and planted so that we have material to work with in the future. Uh, brine mutter, 
forest researcher with the U.S. Forest Service, Southern Research Station. Um, we are doing all things Hemlock Willi Adelgid, figuring out solutions to that invasive pest problem. In order to actually do our predator releases, uh, we have to drive all the way over to the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, to the Beneficial Insects Rearing Lab that Dr. Pat Parkman runs and he rears both Laracobius osakensis and Negrinus. Laracobius osakensis is a predator where the adelgid that is here, they're both native to that same region in Japan. They've determined that adelgids in the native range, the one that's most closely related to the adelgid we have in the east, is from southern Japan. I went to Japan December 2015 and collected the osakensis beetle there. Went to several sites where we thought we could find the beetles. I was able to bring back about 80 beetles. So I got them back here. By the time I started rearing them, there were only like 45 beetles alive still back in, in January. But I was still able to put in about 2,200 larvae in the soil from those 40 beetles. Get in here with the other ones. You don't want to put them out really until the adelgids out in the woods, forest, are starting to grow and feed. See, I'm going to go hide these in the corner. Our goal is to create a natural laboratory out here in the forest where the beetles are reproducing on their own. Yeah, this is a good tree. Lots of HWA to feed on. These beetles are clinging to the branches and the food that they were fed in the lab. And so we're keeping them on that material and then placing them on the outdoor tree. The number of predator beetles that we can release into the environment is very small compared to the millions and millions of hemlock woolly adelgid. So in the meantime, we need to use other tools to keep trees alive. We need to keep treating hemlocks with insecticide to keep them green. We need to keep collecting the genetic material so that we don't lose those hemlocks. It's really satisfying work to be able to do conservation on the landscape, especially in a situation where you have a, a non-native uh, insect pest that you can just see the destruction on the landscape. You can see uh, the havoc that it's causing. Uh, it's nice to be able to be a part of reversing that whole thing. There are other hemlock species. There's hemlock species in Asia that don't have problems with the adelgid. And it's not just the hemlocks, but it's the whole ecosystem that keeps that in, in check. And so that's part of the logic of reintroducing species from the other side of the world. How are we going to make sure that we maintain that in the semblance that our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren, our great-great-great-great-great-great-grandchildren, how do we make sure that they can enjoy this beautiful thing that, that we have? So, what'd you think? Leave your comments down below. Also, a big shout out to the US Forest Service. You guys have been so amazing letting me follow you along as you're trying to find a solution to this really bad pest. All right, we'll see you next video.